Mr. Chairman, today we are discussing the health sector. This government also has placed its own role in ensuring the health sector, and we title our own health, health arrangement as health at your doorstep. Today, we are building 27 general hospitals, each in each of the local governments of Imo State, bringing health care closer to the people, with about 300 health centers in all the communities of Imo State. But of interest, Mr. Chairman, of interest, Mr. Chairman, is the establishment of the OCHDK Renal and Diagnostic Center here along Concord Road of Water, where we have the state-of-the-art equipment of uh, modern equipment like MRI machine, CT scan, and all equipment that takes our people to India. We all have the equipment now in Imo State, and I'll be glad to take my colleagues to that. We also have impact on health education because most of the people are dead in Nigeria for lack of knowledge. People do not even know how to check their BP. So we will now embark on campaign on health education. And today, enough awareness has been created as people, how they can observe their personal hygiene and take care of their health before they get into a place of danger. Mr. Chairman, may I also announce to you that this APC government is constructing right now over 305 schools of modern classroom schools, what we call the upstairs in all the INEC wards of Imo State, and the projects have almost nearly been completed. All this is also is to boost the education sector in our state. Mr. Chairman, perhaps one of the greatest things you might notice as you come into the state is that the landscape of Imo State has changed. We have built this international convention center, one of its kind, and this government house you see here it's literally a brand new government house, including the place we're all seated right now. <laughs> we have also addressed the issue of traffic congestion. And we have introduced many more roads, like the first inland road, second inland road, third inland road, Akachi Road, Oshedike Road, all within the city. And today we are proud to say that Imo is free from unnecessary traffic congestion as a result of many roads that have been opened. <laughs> And we have embarked on construction of over 1,000 kilometers of rural roads in the Imo State. Of interest, Mr. Chairman, as we proceed with this, we have not left our workers out in the staff welfare. We have probably one of the best dressed civil servants today in Nigeria. You can no longer differentiate our civil servants from the bankers of Nigeria. That also applies to our teachers. And our civil servants are paid as at when due. Our teachers are paid as at when due. In fact, we will not pay salary every 15th of every month, not waiting till the end of the month. And this has encouraged motivation in the system that now the civil servants put in their best to the development of our dear state. I might want to share with you on the issue of youth empowerment, Mr. Chairman. Today, we have offered 25,000 jobs to our team in youths. But how do you do this? First, why would not engage in building of new industries? We we'll make sure the legacies of Mbakwe and old industries like Michael Okmara are being revitalized and rehabilitated. One of the things that made us big today is the Imo Palm Plantation. The Imo Palm Plantation, which was built by Michael Okmara and allowed to abandon for so many years, is now has received a new lease of life. And this Imo State government made the first profit of 3.2 billion naira from Imo Palm Plantation while engaging over 2,000 youths who work there. The popular Afotopotri, built by Mbakwe, which was allowed to rot for so many years, Mr. Chairman has now received a new lease of life. And Afotopotri is back to life. Same applicable to the shoe industry in Imo State. Now, we have also created what is called Imo Civil Guard and Imo Community Watch and all other youth empowerment programs that has given us a total of over 25,000 youths now engaged in the productive sector of Imo economy. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we have, we're not that a buoyant oil producing state, but the two local governments where oil is found in Imo state, which is called Ohaje Bema and Dugota, 
the youths were not left out as we gave the youth empowerment program the sum of 500 million naira to enable them for the youth empowerment program. It is important that I use this opportunity to let my party members and leaders know of this because sometimes the news out there does not reflect the practical realities. And it is important that we, the APC governors and APC leaders begin to showcase whatever we're doing since it has become a, a, an issue that if you don't speak, you are not heard. And I want to say to you, Mr. Chairman, that we used to be a tenant in Abuja. Tenant is very shameful act that of all the states in Nigeria, Imo State was the only state renting apartments in Abuja as their licensing office. But today, copying from what I saw of Rivers, Ekiti, Oyo, I've also moved into the line that will now have a befitting licensing office in Abuja within these three years. I want to share this and the relationship between this project and our party logo. One of the greatest gifts of God to an Igbo man, especially the Imo people, is the palm. And the palm represents everything to us. Now, at birth, while a child is in the mother's womb attempting to feed, there's a connectivity between the mother and the child through the, what is called the umbilical cord. At birth, Mr. Chairman, this umbilical cord is cut off and buried under a palm tree. And the child is given that palm tree for life as a way to start life. And that's what is called unkwa law. In other words, the tree of life for that child. But this vital palm or tree has been neglected by past government. And we have reintroduced what is called a kornanko, which is called palm, plant a palm today. And in this process, this same palm is a magical tree that provides everything for an Imo man. First, we have a local candle, which is called Obedumbo, produced from this palm, Mr. Chairman. And we cannot get married in Igbo land if you don't use the wine from that palm as first presentation to get a wife. So that palm remained important to us. And Mr. Chairman, when our ghosts are not doing well, our ghosts want to feed them, we go to the leaf of the palm to feed these goats. Also this. We make soap from this palm. And we also get palm oil from this same palm. Now, one of the spiritual functions that we perform is Palm Sunday. You cannot perform a Palm Sunday without a palm. So everything is in this palm. And the most important of the palm is the broom, Mr. Chairman. Now, for us, broom represents security for us. We have a culture in Igbo land that any time a mosquito in any form or shape makes noise like pee, 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 you, f you flog it with a broom, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> now, and if an enemy comes to your house and you are suspicious of his coming, the next thing you do is to use the broom to sweep off his foot signs on the, on the side. But of importance is also, if you see any cock or hair or any goat, anything at all, coming to eat your maize, use a broom to pursue it. So it remains strength. And we use it to teach our people that when we are together as a broom, no one can break us. So for us, it also represents unity. Thank God that APC used the Igbo property to make Again, my colleagues, I am a firm believer in culture. And uh, I've often said to people, every society of mankind is created by God with their culture. For no society can grow above or beyond their culture, for their culture has a relationship with God. And that was what led to this government to introduce the fourth tier of government, which is called the CGC, Committee Government Council. Today, Mr. Chairman, traditional rulers have been given more powers in Imo State. It might shock you to know that the kidnapping stopped today 
because we were able to use the CGC through the, through the traditional rulers to make traditional rulers as the chief security officers of their communities because they know the tips, so they help us to fish out kidnappers, and that's why there's no kidnapping today. So the CGC has worked a lot for us as a people. With this, Mr. Chairman, I also want to let you know that APC is very strong in Imo State. <laughs> APC is very strong in Abia State. APC is strong in Enugu State. APC is strong in Anambra State. APC is strong in Ebony State. What you see is an apparent weakness of APC, which does not reflect any practical realities. We are tired of the old system. We want to sing a new song in the Southeast. I therefore, Mr. Chairman, ask that while we deliberate on this very vital issue of health, I want to say to all of us that while I join Nigerians in sympathizing with uh, the issue of Ebola and the victims, let me remind all of us that a bad government is worse than Ebola. While Ebola will kill a few thousands of people, a bad government kills generation and subsequent generation. My dream is may we use the same way we fight Ebola to address the issue of bad governance at all tiers of government, whether federal, state, or local government, so there might be freedom for our people. But in spite of this, I believe that one day this our green flag, white, green, white, green, will begin to fly over America and command the commands of America. I believe that one day, Mr. Chairman, our, this Naira, which is like a tissue paper, will one day become a medium of exchange, one to one with dollar. I believe that one day, Nigerian youth can hit their chest and say, indeed, we are Nigerians. God bless all of you.